Okay, FAQ number 75. What about the strange creatures in the King James Bible? Well, here I'll show you an example of it. Job chapter 39, verses 9 and 10 says here, Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Okay, and now people go, oh, that's, that's bad. That's really bad. That, that makes us look foolish as Christians. Oh, why? Because a bunch of fantasy movie makers out there made it into a unicorn into a horse with a single horn. You know? It's kind of a stupid reason to uh, be ashamed of Scripture, isn't it? But let me show you what uh, modern day scholarship does about this. Here you have Job 39, verse 9 and 10. Is the wild ox willing to serve you? Will he spend the night at your manger? Of course, manger is a much more modern word than crib. Sure. Can you bind him in the furrow with ropes, or will he harrow the valleys after you? And you say, what is this? Well, this is the uh, ESV, the uh, extremely satanic version, or extremely stupid vomit, or whatever, you know, whatever you want to make it. <laughs> modern scholarship. They're ashamed of the Bible. So they say, well, we can't say unicorn, or we can't say satyr, or any of these other quote-unquote mythical uh, creatures, you know, because that doesn't make us look scientific. Um, well, <laughs> you have to understand what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Let's go there in the Bible. It's important for you to see these verses if you're newly saved and you don't understand some of this stuff. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Okay, let me show you another verse real quickly that kind of ties in with this whole thing. Turn your Bible to Romans, the book of Romans chapter 1. Uh, let's see where is the one. Verse 20, Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Okay? You see... You can look at things here in this world and you can say, this stuff clearly had a creator. Right? Evolution calls itself science, and yet it's one of the most unscientific theories that's out there. Because a lot of what evolution bases its beliefs upon are things that don't exist. Oh, we have all kinds of transition creatures from the original slimy goo that was here and then it became alive and then you know it evolved to today where are all these transition creatures they'll find a couple little handful lucy you know the skeleton and all those other you know uh pilt down man and neanderthal man and all this other stuff shouldn't there be a lot more evidence of transition from there to here to what we have you know and then they turn around and they laugh at you and mock you because your king james bible says unicorn and yet you say, what's a unicorn? They'll draw some picture of some mythical creature. Where does the Bible say that it was a horse with a horn on its head? And many people believe that it was a rhinoceros, a single horn on the rhinoceros, you know? And, you know, you look at the, like the uh, Greek name, the species name or whatever, you know, and it even talks about, I forget how it's spelled, but like, you know, the word unicorn is in the, the Greek, or the, not Greek, the uh, Latin name for rhinoceros. So, you know, and, and as far as, well, there's creatures in the King James Bible and other things in the King James Bible that we can't explain with our modern day scientific method. Well, what is our modern day scientific method? You know, it classifies us as animals. We're mammals, you know, homo sapiens and stuff like that. That's not real science. Man is made after the image and likeness of God. We're not animals. We're not part of the animal kingdom. They say, well, animals have hair, and you do too, and you breathe above ground, or above water, rather. Well, above ground too. But, you know, and that makes us an animal. You know, and chimpanzees have, they can move their hands and things, and that, you know, fingers, they have fingers and stuff, and not just a paw, like a lot of other animals. So they're our close relative. These people are insane, right? And that philosophy has come in, 
it, it is a religion, it is a religious philosophy, and it's come into the minds of a lot of people, and so they look at the Bible and they try to interpret it through the philosophy of evolution. That's why there's so much trouble. And they, and they say, well, you know, we believe in all the transition creatures that would have been there, even though we can't prove their existence, but there's an animal that we can't explain exactly what it is, or something else in the Bible that we can't explain exactly what it is, and so we'll deny that. But we'll accept an evolutionary theory that has all kinds of weird creatures, even though we can't prove it. I mean, I want to show you a good book here on the subject. Uh, Brother Micah Colston wrote this book, and I'll show you here. Here we have his book, The Embarrassing Bible. I'm not going to show you all the way through this thing and take a lot of time, but he gets into the thing in here about, you know, he's got a really good sense of humor, which I love, but um, you'll notice one thing about Bible believers. Bible believing Christians have a sarcastic sense of humor and kind of a weird sense of humor. Uh, the more of us you meet, the more you'll understand that. <laughs> and uh, But he's got some really, really good articles in here. Here he talks about the rhinoceros, you know, and... Uh, you know, it's just interesting, you know, and, and talks about behemoth and and all the different arguments that people come up with to try and make the, the King James Bible look bad. And, uh, you know, and you'll get, you know, King James only preachers and they'll they'll try to make excuses for certain parts of the Bible that they can't fit into the evolutionary system. It's like, well, they're not supposed to fit it into the evolutionary system because that's a false religion. Uh, you know, just like you can't make the Bible fit into the beliefs of Islam or Roman Catholicism or Buddhism or whatever else, because those are false religions, right? The King James Bible uh, doesn't go along with that modern day stuff. So, you know, when you have these people come out and they're like, well, you know, the Bible, King James Bible talks about unicorns and whatever else, so I can't accept it as a true book of scripture. Well, you know, they're coming to it with an evolutionary philosophy. And when you actually start to study what is the Bible word unicorn, what does it mean? What is a satyr? What is a, you know, some of these other things, dragons. The King James Bible talks about dragons. People say, well, that's fantasy. There is no such thing as a fire-breathing dragon. Oh, uh, well, there's one that we're going to see when we get to heaven. You know, Revelation chapter 12 talks about him be being kicked out of heaven and coming down here to the earth. And uh, so, yeah, there are fire-breathing dragons. Okay, and I remember uh, Dr. Ken Hoven had some good stuff on that about dinosaurs that are still alive and things like this over there's a huge swamp in Africa and it's been like nobody's ever explored the whole thing and there are natives that say that they see giant lizards out there that are not crocodiles so uh, you know basically lizards are you know I think I'm not sure if all of them if I remember from what he was saying but most lizards never stop growing and so you have certain species of lizards that in the pre-flood world uh, where you have a lot of things that are different back then. That's why they were living to be a thousand years old, the men back then. And, you know, the theory is that there's different uh, atmospheric conditions, you know, twice as much oxygen and, and pressure and everything else. And you would, you know, grow much bigger, th plants would grow huge and whatever else. And those lizards, you know, if you have a lizard that lives a thousand years, well, it's going to be a pretty big lizard if they never stop growing. You know, a man gets to a certain age and stops growing. But uh, there, that's a whole other study. But when the Bible talks about those times and gives some things about dragons or, you, you know, unicorns, satyrs, other weird type of creatures in, the, in your Bible, giants, you know, Goliath being a giant, and then, you know, there were giants before the flood, there's giants after the flood. Uh, that's a very interesting study as well. And, you know... Don't be ashamed of your King James Bible because there are some things that modern day evolutionary, you know, philosophy, I don't even want to call it science. Don't be ashamed of your King James Bible because the Bible talks about some of that stuff. So that's all I have to say about that. If you want to get a copy of this book, uh, I don't know. He's brother, um, brother Micah is a very, very, um, a very good man and he's very much into just you know printing books and giving them to people and things like that and and uh, you know he does these things for people 
you know, he puts them in the, in the book form. And uh, his uh, YouTube channel is 33rd Book, okay, Micah Colston. And you can get in contact with him and see if he has any copies of this or if he'd be willing to sell you one or whatever. And, I, you know, I think that good books like this, you know, I think should be purchased by Christians and things. So, um, but um, I don't know, Brother Micah, if you're watching, you know, you can always put your contact info down in the comment section there. But um, don't be ashamed of your King James Bible.